What's up, you guys? I'm Jason J. Epperson. I'm from Omaha. I do spray paint art. This is a five layer sea turtle stencil that I'm getting ready to show you this on. But it, this video is basically about how to make the stencils the easy way. Okay? Now, at the end of this video, I'm also going to put it together and create it. Show you guys how to do that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button before you uh, get out of here. And let's go ahead and get it. Okay, so five layers, like I said. First layer and fifth layer are on the first cutout. First layer is base color, blend, whatever. And fifth, the fifth layer is for the cover, okay? This one can either be used second or third layer, but this is like shading and uh, third details. Secondary details right here. You're gonna put some color in, uh, work their magic, texture, so on. Fourth layer, second to last, which is the primary detail. Okay, this is all black. Boom, gives you your details definition. Okay, that's that. Pretty easy five layer piece. You gotta know what to look for, you can mix it up. But you can also, when you put it together, you can make, uh, look for certain things too. So here's stencil creating, okay? We're using the TV to make it easy, okay? We're gonna go ahead and screen mirror our phone to the TV. Now, each brand of phone or TV may be a little bit different, okay? Remember that. But in your pull-down menu, you should have a screen mirror, or in my case, a Samsung Smart View option. You wanna use your tap Smart View. You gotta be connected to Wi-Fi, same Wi-Fi as your TV, and then you'll find your TV on the list, and you tap it, and it'll connect. Okay? Pretty easy. Self-explanatory. Sizing. Okay, once you get it connected, sizing matters on the image that you're using. Whatever image you pulled up, you gotta size it correctly because otherwise, if you just use like uh, one size, you're not gonna be able to blow it down. So what you wanna do is go to the smallest possible way. What I did is I take, in my uh, gallery there, I take it and I uh, size down my image and I screenshot it. Screenshots are your friend. They will be majorly useful in sizing it correctly. Screenshot it when it's really small in your gallery, and then you can take your phone, flip it sideways, and then blow it up, okay? You just sit there and blow it up, and then you screenshot it once again. That's very important to remember. Screenshot it again. That screenshot, once it is blown up there, boom, screenshot, and it's locked in at that point. So when you're actually cutting uh, or tracing, you won't move it uh that's the important factor okay if you tap your phone or something like that and your image moves and it goes up or down in size it's a pain to get it back to the be the exact size so screenshot it it won't move that's what i gotta say about that so next we're gonna go into um the actual tracing and cutting of the stencil itself and this is just me uh, cutting out that sea turtle stencil initially. It was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a timely one. It took me a couple hours. So don't rush the process is all I'm saying. And just know you're not going to be a pro overnight. It will take time to get good at like anything. Practice matters. So I just go to Walmart and pick up this thick grain poster board paper. It's in the craft section. Very, It's like three bucks. So you can get that stuff there and good to go. Tape down your corners. Okay, you guys, after you pull, overlay the image, tape it down. It'll make sure it doesn't move when you're tracing. So I use two different sizes of pens, one uh, big, which is Sharpie, and then small for my smaller detail lines, which is like felt tip. You can use a big, I'm sure, also. Uh, but yes, that matters. Use the small one for more small detail line work. And then when you're cutting, just make sure you stay accurate and everything like that. So cutting the stencil. Two, uh, two things, the X-Acto knives are number, number one, number two, number one is a small one. I use the number one for the small details, okay? It's very important you remember that. Use an old window, here's a tip, okay? Old windows for your cutting surface, and the glass is really good for the blades. It'll make them last longer. Plus, you can shine light through the glass, no problem. Okay, cutting, uh, also remember this, the light is there, it helps guide you, okay? It will help you along the way again don't worry practice makes perfect the more you do it the faster you'll get bear in mind there's a lot of things that i didn't include in this video 
on making your stencil cutting easier and what to look for and so on and so forth because there's things and steps that you have to learn on your own to really be able to understand the stencil techniques and the process okay there's just things to look for but either way i know you'll get it just to make sure make sure you're determined and persevere through the frustrations okay that's it now let's put this thing together the dungeon <laughs> it's the garage below my apartments where i uh, made this thing it's a little creepy place but um i just gotta do what he's gotta do so let's do it all right so i hope you guys like my reused canvas it was an old american flag that i decided not to this here is the first layer, okay? First and fifth layer, mind you. Base coat, and I blended it, green and yellow. I used the paper, magazine paper, to texturize it. Okay? So that is the initial part right there. So I let that dry. Making sure it's dry is important, so you don't pull the previous layer of paint off as you put the next one on. So layer two, I uh, used white and shaded it a little bit okay on this this is to kind of give it good depth for the next layers coming up and i textured it as well so i use a lot of magazine paper for texture this is my third layer of the stencil right here this is my secondary detail okay and you notice i use multiple colors so as i'm using those multiple colors while the stencil's on there i swiped it i wiped the paint while it was wet to give it a, a certain type of texture look. Okay, so that's pretty easy so far. This part right here, what I'm doing is just making sure I don't go outside and over the uh, the turtle itself. Uh, it really didn't matter because I was gonna do the background anyways later. And I went back and put that secondary stencil on it again to give it more shadowing, shading effect. This is the final detail stencil, number four. This is all black. This really puts it all together and gives you your final details. Now, you can start really seeing this, this turtle come together. And man, it's coming together good. It's looking like something. But it's important to know that these tips and tricks that you do with the stencils while it's going together is important. That's how you get the animal to look more realistic. Okay? There's other animals that I do with hair that I'll actually pull out my fan brush and between stencils I will I'll dab it, I'll tap it, I'll wipe it, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll include different areas and aspects that you don't normally see with stencil creations. You don't have to just spray around the stencil or in the stencil and do nothing else. You can do other things that will actually make it seem more real. So keep that in mind, okay? Don't just spray the stencil. Use other tricks too that you pick up along the way. A lot of that's really learned through trial and error. So there, you notice I used the, the cover. That was the final layer of the stencil. With that cover, I went ahead and made the background. Obviously, in the underwater aspect, the lighter, uh, the lighter color is gonna go towards the top because that's where the sun's coming through. And I put a couple sun rays in there. And uh, of course, I made the, the the land mass underneath the water and whatnot. You're just layering like like you would a normal landscape. And be, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the sun rays with my uh, putty or my, my my knife right there, and then uh, that makes them makes them look like they're popping from behind. And I'll pull the cover and I'll put a couple over the top of the turtle as well, and that'll make it look more three dimensional. Uh, because the sun rays are coming from behind and in front to make it look, again, more realistic. It's pretty simple. Whatever tricks and techniques you learn from other areas of spray paint art, you can use with animals too. All you have to do is try. I hope you guys learned something today. This here is the easy way. You can do it right. I know, I, I got faith in you. Be easy, y'all. Hit subscribe. Peace out. See you on the next one.